Hi everyone, welcome back to another video from Rookie Investor. In today's video, we will go over the different types of stocks an investor or trader will encounter in the stock market. Stocks are separated mainly in two types, common and preferred stocks. However, when you start buying stocks, you will encounter many other categories which will expand on this video. So, starting with the two main types. First, common stock is a security that represents ownership in a corporation. The majority of stocks issued by companies are common stock. When you own a common stock, it gives you the right to vote on board members and other corporate issues at the company's annual meeting. Generally, one share equals one vote. An investor holding five shares of Apple, for example, would only have five votes. In Apple's case, there are more than 16 billion shares. And as you can understand, five votes in such a vast amount of votes means nothing. It is also possible to have non-vote in common stock. Some common stocks also pay regular dividends. This is a subtype which goes by the name dividend stocks, which we'll expand further on this video. Keep in mind that the payouts are never guaranteed and most likely vary. One downside of common stock is that its shareholders are last in line to be repaid if the company goes bankrupt. The second type is preferred stock. As mentioned earlier, the majority of public companies have common stock, but some issue shares of what's called preferred stock. This type of stock offers some of the advantages of common stocks and bonds in a single security. Preferred stocks pays its holders guaranteed dividends, in addition to a chance for price appreciation like you get with shares of common stock. If a company's common stock pays dividends, the preferred stock dividend may very well be higher. Preferred stock shareholders are also more likely to receive some kind of compensation if the company goes under. One more difference is that the company can choose to buy back preferred stock as its option. In addition, shareholders may have the option to convert their preferred stock to common stock. Like common stock, preferred stocks have a downside, and that is that preferred stockholders don't have any voting rights. To summarize, all stocks in the market are either common or preferred. However, there are plenty of categories that you will encounter when you start investing or trading. So let's have a look at them. A very common way to categorize stock is by market capitalization or market cap. This is the value you get when you multiply the total number of company shares by its current stock price. For example, in Apple's case, you multiply the number 16.071 billion with its current price. The amount you should get is close to $2.4 trillion. That may differ depends on the price that the stock has today. Fortunately, for all of us, websites like TradingView, Yahoo Finance and others provide that number to us. On TradingView, you can see the market cap on the stock review page. So, public companies in the United States with a market capitalization of $10 billion or more are categorized as large-cap stocks. Examples of large-cap stocks are Apple, which for the record was the first company to be worth $3 trillion, Amazon, Alphabet, Exxon, Visa, Meta, Goldman Sachs, and so on. There are actually too many. All the companies mentioned are way above the $10 billion uh, mark. Perhaps they need to reconsider the number, to be honest. Anyhow, their tremendous size and influence over markets offer investors greater stability and less risk since such large-cap companies often can navigate through tough periods much easier than smaller companies. Think of 2008, and even keep an eye on the market today, as this will be a very tough period for stocks. Larger companies have the funds to survive and prevail in the long term, compared to smaller companies. One downside of large-cap stocks is that companies of this size tend to grow slower than newer, smaller companies. That means investors shouldn't expect massive returns from investing in them. Moving on, companies with a market capitalization between 2 to 10 billion are called mid-cap stocks. Mid-cap companies combine the stability of established business with more of the growth potential of smaller companies. Mid-cap stocks can offer the potential for growth as they expand their share of the markets where they do business. Plus, they are often the target of mergers or acquisitions by large-cap companies. When one company, let's call it company A, buys another, company B, the stock price of the buying company, company A, tends to dip temporarily, while the stock price of the target company, company B, tends to spike. The acquiring company's share price drops because it often pays a premium for the target company or incurs debts to finance the acquisition. 
Last, the small cap stocks are US companies with a market capitalization of 300 million to 2 billion. There are many times more small cap companies than the number of large and mid cap stocks combined. Small cap stocks offer investors huge opportunities for growth, and the small cap market is made up of a lot of future mid cap and large cap companies. At the same time, these stocks are among the riskiest investment options since small cap stocks experience high market volatility. Additionally, small caps can also include companies facing bankruptcy and companies that are positioned for acquisition. Investing in small caps brings the possibility of impressive gains with the potential for major losses. Another way to categorize stocks is based on two popular investment methods, growth investing and value investing. Growth investors tend to look for companies that are seeing their sales and profits rise quickly. On the other hand, value investors look for companies whose shares are inexpensive, whether relative to their peers or their own past stock price. Growth stocks are companies that are expanding their revenues, profits, share prices, or cash flows at a greater rate than the market at large. The goal when investing in growth stocks is seeing strong price appreciation over time. However, growth stocks offer more potential for volatility since these companies are more likely to be taking risks to achieve that growth. Growth companies tend to reinvest their earnings into the business and may not pay dividends. While many growth stocks are smaller companies that are new to the marketplace, that's not always true in every case though. But most of the time, growth companies are strongly focused on innovating and disrupting their industries. You're going to find a lot of growth companies in the technology sector, for example. Value stocks, on the other hand, are the shares of companies that are on sale. To put it another way, value stocks are strong companies that are being underpriced by the stock market. Value investors try to uncover companies in the value stock category, buy their shares, and wait for the rest of the market to wake up and realize their true value. To find these shares, value investors look for companies with a low price-to-book ratio or low price-to-earning ratio as well as certain other factors. Let's stop here for a second, because to understand value stocks better, you need to understand price-to-book ratio and price-to-earning ratio. The price-to-book ratio is calculated by dividing a company's market capitalization by its book value of equity as of the latest reporting period. Using Tesla as an example, let's calculate the price-to-book ratio. The market cap is $950 billion and the book value of the equity or total equity which can be found in the balance sheet and it is the total assets minus total liabilities is 31.58 billion. If we do the calculation, the result we get is around 30. Now, if you look at the statistics of TradingView, the number is at 36 for 2021, but consider that the price of the stock was higher, which means their market cap was higher. Anyhow, any value you get below 1 is considered to be a good price to book ratio for value investors, as it indicates potentially undervalued stock. So the magic number to keep here is price to book ratio below 1. The price to earning ratio is the ratio for valuing a company that measures its current share price relative to its per share earnings. The ratio is used for valuing companies and to find out whether they are overvalued or undervalued. To calculate the price to earning ratio, you need to divide share price with diluted earnings per share. Using once more Tesla as an example, we can find that the stock price in the board and the diluted earnings per share in the income statement. If we do the calculation, the number we will get is 109, as I divided 303 with 2.77. Keep in mind that when I wrote that video, the price of the stock was a 303. When I record it, it differs a little bit. Always use the current numbers, which is in the TTM or trailing 12 month. Investors and analysts consider stocks that have price to earning ratio of 50 or above to be an overvalued share. In the case of Tesla, this has been the case for years, but eventually it will come down to its normal state. On the other hand, a stock with a price to earning ratio of 10 or below is considered undervalued. To summarize, for an undervalued stock, you want the price to book to be below 1 and the price to earning to be 10 or below. An additional way to categorize stocks is based on their location. For purposes of distinguishing domestic US stocks from international stocks, most investors look at the location of the company's official headquarters. International stocks are shares of companies from outside of your home country, 
Now, investing in an international stocks provides extra diversification. You want to mix up a little bit your portfolio. And usually it's not impacted by the internal market forces, but the external. So you have to be have a balance there. Buying international stocks may give investors access to faster growing economies, as well as different risk and return patterns. Additionally, though, international stocks can provide a hedge against the US dollar losing buying power. But when the dollar is strong, international stock returns can be weakened. When you invest in international stocks, you always need to keep an eye on what's going on in the world. If you invest, for example, in a stock in Germany, and as you see, Germany now is suffering from gas and oil shortages, you want to be a little bit skeptical of how that will play in the long term. Over the last years, IPOs became very popular, and I'm certain you have heard of them. Private companies that want to get access to public stock markets often make an initial public offering. This involves listing their shares of stocks on an exchange like the New York Stock Exchange or the Nasdaq for sale to the public. Getting in a new stock is quite exciting and many investors like to chase IPO stocks. But new, unproven public companies aren't always a short bet. Over time, more than 60% of IPO stocks saw negative returns after 5 years. An example of an IPO was Coinbase, which when listed in the Nasdaq was trading for around $240 and now it's around $70. In general, many IPOs have a lot of hype behind them, so they tend to rise in the first few days or weeks and then decline heavily after. If you visit the Nasdaq website and go under IPO performance, you can see the last entries and how they performed in the first, 30th, 60th day and so on. In general, if you're interested in IPO stock investing, make sure you do your due diligence very well prior investing and consider also investing a small amount. Another category of stocks is the blue chip stocks. Investors who want steady returns and reliable dividends should check out blue chip stocks. While there's not a particular definition of a blue chip stock, these investments generally serve a few characteristics. They are large cap companies with name recognition, decades long histories of reliable performance, a track record of steady earnings and consistent dividend payouts. Does anything come to mind? Well, some examples are Berkshire Hathaway, Alphabet, Mastercard, Chevron, and so on. Keep in mind that since these companies are well established, expect the cost per share to be higher, plus don't expect major growth. The opposite of blue chips is the penny stocks, which are very risky, speculative investments that are in many cases outright frauds. As their name suggests, penny stocks have a very low valuations. Historically, penny stocks were, as their name implies, priced in pennies, coming in at less than $1 per share, though now penny stocks may run as high as $5 per share. Companies behind penny stocks are very often in financial trouble, with collapsing businesses or even no real business in the first place. Penny stocks are not listed on major stock exchanges. They are traded over-the-counter and have vanishingly small trading volumes, making them highly liquid investments. Worst of all, penny stocks are favorite tool of scammers. Pump and dump seems use penny stocks to deceive naive investors out of their money. Does this guy look familiar to you? What's the Wolf of Wall Street? It's a classic and explains very well the danger of being invested in penny stocks. Three categories of stocks that are quite popular are the dividend stocks, the income stocks, and the safe stocks. A dividend stock is a publicly traded company that regularly shares profits with shareholders through dividends. Many stocks make dividend payments on a regular basis. Dividends provide valuable income for investors, and that makes dividend stocks highly popular. Technically, paying even one cent per share qualifies a company as a dividend stock. However, not all stocks pay dividends or they have to pay dividends. Non-dividend stocks can still be strong investment if their price rises over time. Some of the biggest companies in the world don't pay dividends, like Amazon, Meta, former Facebook for those who don't know Meta now, and Alphabet, although the trend in recent years has been towards more stocks making dividend payouts to their shareholders. Income stocks are another name for dividend stocks, as the income that most stocks pay out comes in the form of dividends. However, income stocks also refer to shares of companies that have more mature business models and have relatively fewer long-term opportunities for growth. These stocks are ideal for conservative investors who need to draw cash from their investment portfolios right now, and they tend to be favorable among those in or nearing retirement. 
Last, safe stocks are stocks whose share prices make relatively small movement up or down compared with the overall stock market. Also known as low volatility stocks, safe stocks typically operate in industries that aren't as sensitive to changing economic conditions. You will find them mostly in the utilities sector. They often pay dividends as well and that income can offset failing share prices during tough times. The next category goes by the name cyclical stock and defensive stocks. Cyclical stocks are companies whose sales and their share prices tend to surge when the economy is growing out of an economic slowdown and into a boom. On the other hand, shares tend to fall and sales contract when the economy is slowing down. To put it another way, they follow the booming and the busting right of the business cycle. Some cyclical stocks depend on consumer spending. These include retail companies, dining, technology and travel. Defensive stock, meanwhile, are shares of companies whose business are less impacted by the ups and downs of the business cycle. Utility stocks, healthcare stocks, and consumer staple stocks are all considered defensive investments. That's because their revenue and potentially their stock prices remain steady in boom and bust economies. Some invest in cyclical stocks when they believe the economy is poised for growth and move to defensive stocks when they anticipate an economic contraction. This strategy is known as a sector rotation. It can be risky because no one can really predict the economy's next move with 100% accuracy. The last category of stocks in our list is the ECG stocks or environmental, social and governance stocks. ECG stocks is an approach to investing where people only buy the stock of companies that exhibit responsible corporate behavior. ECG stocks are judged by a third-party rating system to determine that they follow all the rules and they are environmentally sustainable, they are socially responsible, while uh, also maintaining a good corporate governance that encourages diversity and pays equity within the company. Investors who care about ECG investment consider every company to have stakeholders that go well beyond simply the stock market, including workers, communities, customers, and the environment. ECG stocks allows you to invest in companies whose corporate values align with your personal values. I hope that this video sheds some light to the types and categories of stocks you will encounter in the stock market. In the next video, I will talk about the stock sectors, so make sure you stay tuned. I will make more videos about stock investing, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and of course, if you like the video, please smash that like button. It will mean a lot. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.